Thanks for joining me. This uh, is Anthony Davis, and I'd like to teach you um, what is flexibility. So when you look at a muscle, um, a lot of people think that your muscles are tight and you need to stretch them, and that by stretching your muscles, you will gain flexibility. Um, and that when you gain flexibility, your muscles physically become longer. Uh, most of that would be inaccurate. So let's take a look at what a muscle is. Um, I want you to understand that if you feel that you are not flexible, it is not because your muscles are tight or too short. It is because your brain is not allowing your muscles to move along their full um, length and change, uh, change shape. Your brain is inhibiting you or preventing you from changing uh, the shape of your muscles, uh, the length of your muscles, as a safety pr uh, precaution. So flexibility is about gaining control over your muscles. It's not about lengthening tissues. So I want to I want to show you that why it's not about lengthening your muscles. Uh, when we look at a muscle, here's uh, just any random muscle of the body. It doesn't matter. They're all like pretty much like this. Um, here's a muscle. Then if you look at a muscle, you cut it in half like a hot dog, you'd have a bunch of bundles of bundles, and those are fascicles. Each one of those little bundles in there is a fascicle. And then each one of these fascicles has a bunch of bundles inside of it. Those are here, and those are muscle fibers. Each muscle fiber, so now we've got bundles of, um, so we've got a muscle that has compartments of bundles, which are fascicles, and then bundles of fibers inside of that. And then if we go look at a muscle fiber, that'll look like this. And inside of the uh, muscle fiber, this is a muscle cell. This is actually what a muscle cell looks like. And inside of that, you see a bit, bunch of columns. And those columns uh, actually have columns inside of them. If you see all the little dotted areas here, those dots would represent the ends of um, a column-like protein, so a long column-like protein. And the length of those proteins is fixed. You cannot change the length of those proteins. So when we look at a muscle, what we would see is that this area here, from here to here, is a sarcomere. And that sarcomere has two proteins inside of it, and they overlap. So the first, if we are in a um, contracted state, if you think that your muscles are tight, then maybe they are. Maybe they're in, in a shortened state. And what they would look like is that you would have this myosin protein, which is kind of thick and it has these heads on it, and these little heads um, cause contraction. And then you would have an actin protein which overlaps with the myosin protein. And this actin, when it overlaps, now you're in a shortened position. So this is um, a contract, contracted or short position. Okay? Then, you, if you wanted to make your muscles, if you wanted to be more flexible, what has to happen is that the actin, which is pictured in green, has to become longer. Well, excuse me, it doesn't actually become longer. That's the whole point of the video. Uh, even I am, the, the word longer and make your muscles longer is so ingrained in our, um, in our vernacular in yoga that it, even, even as I'm teaching you about how that's not true, I still say it because it's so ingrained into our, um, uh, the way we speak. Anyway, what would happen is you would need to take the ends here, right? You'd need to take the ends and move them in this direction, right? So you'd have to move, or you could think about it like, take this whole bar, this whole green bar with its little projections, and you'd have to move the whole thing out. And then that unit would become longer. 
but it's going to have a hard stopping point. It's going to have a hard point where you cannot move it any longer without ripping it. So what that would look like, if you kept moving this out, then eventually it would reach an end. So um, let's say we just moved it a little bit, like halfway, then the um, muscle would, the actin would move to here, right? But we could move it further, right? So we could have moved it even further than that. So on the right side, we'll say it's partially contracted. On the left side, let's say we moved it all the way to its end point. And now you can see that the ends of the proteins here, right here and right here and right here and right here, they're barely overlapping with the myosin pictured in uh, magenta. So if you pulled that any further, if you continued to stretch beyond that, um, if you continued to pull this way, then you would pull the proteins, you would rip them forcefully apart, right? And you would damage the muscle. You would uh, irreparably damage uh, the muscle. Okay, you would tear your muscle in a bad way, in a very bad way. We, we would not want that to happen. And um, so th th the point is that you have a fixed length. This whole unit cannot become longer. You, you have a fixed point. You can't make it longer. So um, your, oh no, did I just erase the whole thing? Ah, uh, can I undo that? Oh, good. Fantastic. Okay. So anyway, you can't make the whole thing longer, but what you can do is uh, your brain it controls this whole process, right? So you can't actually, your muscles aren't tight. Your muscles aren't physically, like structurally tight. What's happening is that your brain just doesn't want your muscles to become too long because it does not believe that you can control it. So if you've got your brain... Um, let's say this is a, uh, there's a little uh, cerebellum and, and here's, um, okay, so that's a brain, okay? Can we just, all of us just pretend like I drew a really nice brain. And this brain is going to reach out via spinal nerves, right? And these nerves are going to go to the muscle and it's going to send um, an electrical impulse and it's going to say, hey, um, you are allowed to contract or please don't contract. Stop contracting, right? We need to relax. So the brain is in control of this whole process. So if you find that your muscles are only willing to go to this partial sort of um, lengthened position, then you just, your brain isn't letting you do that. So if you use passive flexibility techniques and you are just, you know, doing yin yoga and you're just doing these deep, 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 oh, these so deep stretches and, you know, put, trying to put your foot over your head and like just trying to relax and, and stretch, you're not actually teaching your brain how to control that lengthened position. It's not a bad thing to lengthen your muscles. It's fine to move your muscles from point A here, um, contracted, to point B here, which is lengthened. It's okay to move between those, those two states. Your muscles are designed to do that. But when you don't use your brain to control that process, then you uh, are, are not, well, you're not in control, right? So if you're not in control, then the, there's more likely uh, scenarios that you would have damage to your tissues. Um, and furthermore, your, your brain's going to inhibit you from actually exploring those places um, for a reason, right? If your brain is trying to stop you from reaching uh, the, these endpoints right here, then if your brain doesn't want you to go that far, it's because you can't control it. You've never given your brain a reason to think that you are fully in control and you can handle it, that you're strong enough to protect yourself in that lengthened position. Because the problem, one of the problems here is that when you're in this um, stretched position, then your muscles are very weak. So when you're stretched, your muscles, when you're stretched too much, I should say, when you are stretched 
um, a stretch that is greater than 130% um, equals weak. Okay, so if your muscles are stretched beyond 130% of of nor of their um, of their resting length, then you are going to be weak. So you might say that this um, example here on the the right, let's say this is your um, resting length. Okay, and then on the left, this is like. So resting length equals 100% um, um, of the resting length, right? So if you stretched it on the left now, we're at like, uh, let's say this is like 200% of, uh, of resting length. Then the state on the left, because it's beyond that 130%, is weak. As it's very, very weak. And so if you're in a very weak uh, uh, state, you can't control it. So if you forcefully stretch yourself um, to uh, beyond about 130% of your resting length, then your muscles become very weak and your brain has a very good reason for trying to protect itself by not allowing you to stretch it too far. So. Um, I know I threw a lot of terms at you here, a, a lot of different concepts, and I hope the numbers didn't confuse you um, because I know we just went over, I know I said here's 100% and then 200% and all that and 130. Um, still, what I'm, what I'm comparing that to is like resting length. And so I'm not saying like you can't make this whole thing bigger. Still, that's the whole point. This whole thing only has a certain um, l length that it can get to. Right. So if if it can get to 10 um, nanometers, for example, I, it's actually probably much bigger than that. But let's say it can get to 10 ma nanometers and that is the full length, then your resting length might be at um, is at like maybe let's say five nanometers. Right. So then five nanometers is 100 percent of your resting length. And then 200% of your resting length is 10 nanometers, if that makes sense. That is probably a lot more math than like 90% of you give uh, give a shit about. So sorry about that. But um, I really want you to understand how flexibility works because you're you're not your muscles aren't tight. Your brain is protecting you for a reason. Um, and if you want to gain mobility, it's that's fine. But it, it's it's not going to be very useful to gain mobility passively. If you are not gaining mobility in a way where your brain is talking to your muscles physically, um, moment by moment, controlling them actively and allowing them to become long and become short and become long and, be and become short, even in a dynamic way, um, then your f flexibility that you do gain is going to be weak it is going to be useless, it is going to be dysfunctional, meaning you can't actually use your flexibility, right? There's a big di uh, difference between the way a dancer uses, uh, or a gymnast, right? An Olympic gymnast uses their flexibility and the way a yogi uses their flexibility, okay? The, the gymnast might do the splits. I would argue against doing the splits in the first place. I don't think it's a great idea. But if we're talking strictly about the actual muscles, because I, I wouldn't advise, advise doing the splits because um, of what is happening in the, in the joints, but if we're only talking about the muscles, then the way the gymnast controls their flexibility is totally different and active and much, much, much better than um, and much safer, stronger, more protected than the way a yoga uh, person would control, well, would not really control their flexibility, okay? The yoga person has no real control over their end range, whereas the, the, the gymnast might be able to literally jump and do a backflip and land in the splits and jump out of the splits. Jump out of the splits. Insane, the, the kind of things that some, uh, or martial artists like the Shaolin monks, you see them literally jump off of the ground from the splits. It's insane. 
So uh, anyway, y y you think about how active they are versus how passive yogis are. Um, and it's a very different thing when we're talking about what's happening in the muscles. So active uh, control over your mobility is going to be much better. Um, I hope this helps. I hope this doesn't confuse you. If you have questions, please let me know. And if you have suggestions for a future topic or something you'd like me to explain, I'd be happy to do that. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe to wherever you're seeing this, uh, if it's on Instagram or you know YouTube or whatever, because um, I release a lot of free educational materials um, and you want to uh, get notified when I do. So thanks a lot. Uh, I'll see you next time.